quickly. Your Honor, Article 50, Subsection 2B of the Constitution states that an accused in keeping with... We came here this morning, Your Honor, the first accused is here. We came here ready to take plea, now to be served with this, to look at this with this counsel prior to taking plea. It's really, what, what the prosecution is trying to do is to actually just tell him, take the plea now on a document that you've not seen. Um, it's just been given to your lawyer. It's very unfair, Your Honor. That should not happen, Your Honor. And therefore we're saying he's here, he's ready, but we can explain this to him, Your Honor. It's, it's purely in keeping with the Constitution, Your Honor. That's all, Your Honor. Yes. The said documents were divided into two sections. Yeah. And one was what they called um, a prosecution disclosure schedule. And the other one, Your Honor, was what they called a table of contents. Yeah. Now, Your Honor, when we looked at these documents, they raised issues similar to the ones that we canvassed before you in case number 30, case number 31, when we came for disclosure. But, number 32, but the documentation in this particular case was in some cases totally different. So, So the issues arising that we raised or we saw after being supplied are issues that still call for us to have a session of disclosure before this court. Because again, Your Honor, we have the similar issues of incomplete documents that were supplied. Can I see what you have? Yes, Your Honor. Did you give me what you supplied? Give me the inventory. Today we were to deal with two issues and we shall deal with them. Fair enough, Your Honor. They can I supply want to a copy. see whether it's in tandem with what you have. Most obliged. So perhaps they can give the, co the court a copy. They've given me a copy. Okay. Do you agree that it's the one I will adopt it? If you look at it. Can we have a minute to just look at it? Just a minute, Your Honor? You as, can't as we cross -check. access it online. We, we, we Mr. Kunda, where is yours? We can also do the same as we see whether you've been given the same one. That's why we need to look at your copy, Your Honor. Okay, just check. This one we must deal with it today. Thank you. And finish. So, this is page. Number nine. B9. B9. Yes, we. B17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
three page seventeen eleven. Seventeen eleven. That's okay. P forty five. P forty five. The back of the hospital. Mhm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B48, mm -hmm. page 17, 1756. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then, B56. B56. Mm -hmm. Last page. Page 44. Mm -hmm. Page 44. Yeah, page. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to sign. Come back to page. Come back to page. Come back Yes, mm -hmm. this J67. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, we wish to confirm that uh, what we have online. It means everything is beautiful the same way in terms of uh, deductive statements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, on the 14th and 15th of August 2020, yeah. prior to them amending the charge, yes. which they want to amend this morning, yes. they now need to indicate to this court whether or not they are supplying us new documents relating to the amended charge, because we don't have those documents. Yes. Then the other thing, Yona. Yes. The other thing, Yona. If you notice the document served upon you, mm -hmm. um, uh, the disclosure was meant to be count by count. And uh, if you notice that what they are putting across in terms of the documentation is just generalizing and saying all counts, which of course is prejudicial to the first accused and more so does not comply with the order that was made by this court. Yes. yes. And more so, Yona, yes. in light of the new amended charge sheet, yes. if now the narrative is all counts as per the document in front of you. How then will the new charge fit those documents unless they are to supply us other documents? Either way, either way, there's a gap that the prosecution needs to deal with. prior to the directions or prior to the taking of plea. Then, Your Honor, the other thing that is also quite apparent from what is in front of you mm -hmm. is we will need directions on issues of redacted statements. Because, again, as you are aware, in the other matter before you, we were unable to agree with the prosecution. And here, you have documents marked D1 to D20. They are all redacted. I will still take the same position. Sir, yes. Like I took last time. Fair enough. And that's why I want to just get, uh, raise it to the court that the court will have to give directions on that issue. Yes, I've noted that. We Most need directions yes. on issues of the back statements. That's all you honor. That's all you honor. Before they reply. Currently in the in the documents that have been supplied to the court, mm -hmm. disclosure was to be done count by count. That one I have a problem. Yes. Justice Onyego in his ruling mm -hmm. disagreed with me. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are taking advantage. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So, so Agi, knowing that that is the position of the High Court. Yes, fair enough. So the, the list of exhibits you've been given, the inventory you've been given this morning by the prosecution, mm -hmm. states that they've disclosed on all counts. There's disclosure on all counts. 
Yes. Your Honor, and this, as the way this court has been informed this morning, is that there's a new count, in particular count two, that has been introduced in the new amended charge sheet. Mm -hmm. And that, which is also very important, that the new particulars that have been changed in the previous charge sheet. Yeah. Your Honor, therefore it's our position that on the matter of disclosure, there is no disclosure. Yeah. There is no disclosure yeah. on this new charge sheet. And we similarly request for time to look at it. The substratum and the substance of the charges remain the same. We are not introducing any new issues different from what we had earlier filed. And you know, applications of this nature, the defense the issues the defense can raise with, uh, <coughs> with respect are uh, issues to deal with the charge, whether the charge is effective or not. That one has not been done. Now, there was the other issue whether the new amendments. To all counts, how will they fit in the new document? I think you've answered that. I've answered that, Your Honor. Now, the other issue. <coughs> Your Honor, it's difficult for me to confirm that because I haven't even seen the new charge sheet. Yeah? I haven't seen the new... No, what I wanted yeah. is what... The question Mr. by the High Court. In revision number 8 of 2020, and in number 42 of 2019, the issues of... So, you know, unless there's any other issue you want me to address, I believe, in summary, I've addressed all the issues. Um, there is no guarantee to show me the critical mm -hmm. the police took a note. You know, the, the, the substitution of this charge, there is no prejudice occasioned. Since we brought it at the earliest opportune time, we will not even commence the trial. Now, um, at this moment, I'm satisfied but, yes. that you have the documents. You have the documents. I will go on with the, unless there is an issue on disclosure, I want to go on, I finish with disclosure, then give directions on how the charge, or on when the new charges will be read. Yeah, I don't want to waste time on that. Any issue on disclosure? It's okay. No. It's all right. No. DPP, are you disclosing any new... No, no we are not, Your Honor. Yeah? We are not, Your Honor. Is it in record that uh, the undertaker are not disclosing any other information? But they have said they are not. So we can expand <coughs> they have, they have said today. they have given you all the documents. Mm. At this stage, that is enough for me Thank you. to proceed. Mm -hmm. Now, on the issue of uh, redacted statements, Mr. Miller, I'm not changing my position. Yes, sir. Because this case is uh, being tried by this court. So it's been yes. So I don't need to make a ruling on that. I will deal with it when that time comes. That's fair enough. Yeah, of course I can see from what you've presented. Yes, sir. These are issues that can be dealt with at trial.
If they give you an illegible document, we deal with it at trial. Because there are issues of admissibility. Yes, I think I'm very comfortable with that. How many witnesses are you calling? I'm calling the uh, Moksha again. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, no, they're not 20. They're not 20. They're not 20. This is number one. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know we are calling 20 witnesses? Are they 20? Uh -huh. yeah, they are yeah, 20. 20. Nothing else? That's it, that's it, yeah. Not confirmation, as is alleging, that parties agreed that we be supplied with redacted statements 24 hours before the hearing. That document that you're looking at, which I also have a copy of here, does not have any submissions to that effect, Your Honor. So we still leave it to this court to give directions because there was no agreement. What about alleged. item C? Item C, yes. Count by count. Yes, Is that the prosecution indicated they would rely on all documents for all the counts? Next. Then the uh, resolutions as agreed by defense counsels, prosecutors, and investigators. That's what I want to look at. Just give me a minute. Yes. There, there you are, Your Honor. This particular charge sheet. Mm. Um, oh, 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 I think the court has directed that you issue directions on that. So yes. Really, don't, I don't talk need to about the charge. I will not go into that. Mm. So, so I then will leave it to the court to give directions on the issue of the redacted statements. That's all. Because that, that one I will give. I will give. Fair enough. I, I think beyond that, then you I have must not. have gone through the documents supplied. Yes. The DPP indicates that they'll need. Um, of course, they are calling 20 witnesses, and they'll need 64 hours. Yes. Let me let my colleague hand that one. You know, on the, the redacted statements or documents. Yeah. On the issue of supply. Yeah or disclosure of the redacted statement, completely redacted or redacted in any other form, mm. they have applied or suggested that the suppliers within 24 hours before the hearing. You know, this is an issue that we handled in the previous disclosures and a direction by court was given on that. What did the court say? You know, being that First, there shall be no adjournment after that particular disclosure of the <coughs> redacted information. Yeah. But for purposes of the direction before this court, we do apply as follows. Number one, that 48 hours before the hearing will be supplied with that information. If the hearing is on a Monday, so that the 48 hours will fall within the preceding weekend to that Monday for hearing, then will be supplied the Friday preceding the Monday for hearing. Now, in calling for your discretion in favor of application, yes, is that we need, you know, to prepare for hearing adequately and to compare that information with feedback from our clients. You know, that is a heavily interactive process taking into consideration the voluminous documentation 
that will be comparable and linking the statements or the documents that were redacted information with the various documents or the relevance mm. of the various documents or relation there to. Yeah. Yes. So, so you know, we sub we propose that that would be adequate information at the minimum within which our, yes within which we can interact with all the voluminous documents be ready for cross examination and proceeding as well as consult with our clients are you offering clip again okay. uh, I, I think for purposes of um, because uh, you've asked I'll consider it in the trial order yes uh, Any offer? Uh, for now, we have no instructions. Anything else? On the issue of the second of the witnesses. Yes. On the issue of the witnesses, we will be requesting the prosecution to supply the defence with a schedule. Of I can hear your discussions, please. You are saying through a shared email? Through the shared email. The same way they supply, they can supply the shared of witnesses. Yes. <clears throat> Secondly, Your Honor, I seek this first, the court's clarification of the point of the applications. As he said, we should, the court should not accept applications within the hearing and that they should come seven days prior. He said notice. Notice. And the position in this court is that I don't hear applications during trial. If you need to bring an application, you bring it on any other day mm -hmm. other than a hearing date. Right, Your Honor. Maybe we should leave it open. Yes. So that we deal with it during the hearing. Yeah. If it's on admissibility, we deal, it, we deal with it there. Because no party will be allowed to introduce a document as the trial proceeds. I believe that's where we usually have problems. Anything else? Are you offering plea bargain? Your Honor, I have no instructions. So we can just see. I think what remains is uh, on when to disclose the protected, the redacted statements. You are saying 24 hours, you are saying 36, can you agree? Sheet. Putting in mind this case has a hearing date. Yes. Defense, can you come back tomorrow? Just for plea. Your Honor, um, tomorrow we are before your brother, Honorable uh, uh, Andai, in, uh, in Thika, on the, the other matter where we have to go and uh, look at uh, the premises. TPP, Monday 9, 9 a.m.
It's okay? Yes. Keep us here. Days? Uh, keep days? No, how many days do, do we have the now? We have now. Yes. So, we had uh, Monday, the 14th. We have Tuesday also, Your yes. Honor. Mm -hmm. This matter will be heard on day to day basis. No adjournments will be allowed unless the issues causing the same are beyond the control of all parties. No application will be entertained during the hearing, any such application to be made by the parties by giving a seven days notice and such application to be had on any other day other than the day for hearing. Of course, this does not affect applications on admissibility of evidence. The redacted statements Let me just add something. You already have a common email. Yes, yes. yes. So the redacted statements to be served on the defense that six hours before the hearing through the common email. I hope you'll not repeat serving the redacted statements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? They may just do that, you know. No, 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 no. I'll be here. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the order that says as much. Because I think the indirect statements should be served within that six hours. So perhaps you need to say the, the redacted statements now unredacted. Yes. Just add an. And, uh, yes. Okay. The unredacted statements to be served on the defense that six hours before the hearing through the common email. Now, um, the prosecution to supply a schedule of the chronology in which they will call their witnesses within seven days of the hearing. And in case there is change to issue <coughs> such notice within three days of the seven days. You issue seven days, if there is change within the first three days, you follow it up with such change. Now, parties are encouraged to plea bargain, <clears throat> and in any case, all the court will need is such information to go on record that plea bargaining has been initiated this will not be allowed to interfere with the trial. Court will only wait for the plea trial agreement in order to consider the same. In case there is need to use any electronic gadget, the parties to inform the court seven days prior to that need. Eh? <coughs> The prosecution's disclosure schedule acknowledged by the parties is adopted and marked Exhibit 1, this one, so that nobody runs away from it. Now, from the presentation by the prosecution and defense on the timelines the case will take, The trial may take approximately 144 hours. The case will be allocated five hours on daily basis, on a daily basis, translating to about 28 days. Hence, the matter will be allocated 28 days. That is before we allocated the, the fresh ones. Now, fresh plea on the substituted charge sheet to be taken on 14th September 2020 at 9am and hearing to proceed. Now we have further dates, um, further hearing dates 7 to 12 to 10th 
of December 2020 and other dates to be taken on the remaining 17 days <coughs> on Monday, yeah? Yes. 14th of September. That is that? Yes, sir. So I've said the pre-trial order to be available to before I close the file. We are John. The second accused person, <laughs> my lady. For the second accused, I have Mr. Lumumba, I have C. Odor, I have Mr. Ondo, and there was a fourth person. Mr. My lady, for the for the second accused person, my name is Adan Stanumari. I'm joining Professor Lumumba as the defense team. I'm sorry, Council, the internet is pretty bad, so I'm not able to hear you properly. Mr. Lumumba, can you introduce your team, please, again? My, I, I uh, appear with Caroline Odor, Jemima Aluda, and we are getting informed that there is an addition to our team, the more the merrier. Uh, so I hear Mr. Dance and Omari, I see them, uh, and I hear Mr. Undo. So I think we are going to be 11 members of this team. Okay. For well, the first. My name is Aru. So we have Mr. Aaron for the first accused. Yes, Miss Fisher, I believe this must be yes, my lady. Yes, my lady, this matter was coming up for me. We have we have uploaded the mental assessment as required by the court on Friday. But, uh, would you, be able in a, would you be in a position, my lady, to confirm if you have it in front of you? I'm sorry, Miss Ekeshehe, if those coming properly, what do you want me to confirm is present? I want, I want to confirm if you have copies of the mental assessment. Yes, I do. For the first and second accused. Yes. Then we are ready to take three minutes. Well, 
Lady, my lady, before the plea is taken, could I be allowed to inform the court? Because the internet is not very good, I will ask uh, the mother, Mr. Arum, are you ready to take plea? Is the client ready to take plea? Yes, my lady, you're very much Your leadership, uh, I'm informed that the new colleagues who have come have put in an application and I would want them to address you on that matter first, if you permit. Thank you very much. My lady, the second accused person filed a, an application E22 of 2020. Can anyone hear Mr. Omar? My lady, we cannot, I cannot hear him clearly. My lady, is it clear to everybody? Am I am a bit loud? Is it clear now, Mr. I'm not able to hear you. Is it clear? Hello, my lady, is it clear now? Is it clear now? Yes, Mr. Omari, what is the nature of your application? My lady, we, the second accused person filed a mis, uh, an application E22 of 2020 seeking to defer the plea taking today. The same was filed in the morning. I'll be seeking directions from the court. If that application is before you, so that I can prosecute the application. What I have heard from you, Mr. Omar, is that the second applicant has filed an application this morning in which he seeks to defer the plea taking. Mr. Omar. Yes, my lady. You were saying that the second accused has filed an application seeking to defer the plea taking. Yes, my lady. Yes, my lady. I can highlight. Has this application been served in Paris? My lady, we have just filed it in the morning. 
That is why we were seeking that uh, the plea taking be deferred. The application is put before you. Once you give directions, it is an application that if it is hard, the plea will not proceed. We have not gotten your directions, my lady, to enable us serve. That is what I understand from them. Mr. Lumumba. Your, your, your ladyship, I hear them. They have received instructions to which we, the three that I named, namely myself, Caroline Odur, and Jemima Aluda, are not privy to. But to the extent that it will impinge upon this, we will go with the application for this nature is of the kind that uh, will obviate the need for plea being taken if it does succeed. But it appears from your record that what you have filed has not been availed to court and in the circumstances your leadership may then lie as will happen even that the first accused is ready to take the plea on instructions this morning what to apply for the circumstances notwithstanding, either before plea is taken or after plea is taken. Those are our instructions. The instructions I have to do what, Mr. Lumumba? Again, you go first. Instructions, instructions were to come before you, as she appeared before your brother, Judge Wakiaga, on Friday the 4th, for plea to be taken and thereafter application for bail to be made. But in the intervening period, as a plan is entitled to do, we have instructed another set of advocates, namely Mr. Mari, Mr. Witte, and Mr. Undo, to make an application 
is for purposes of what they have described as deferring the taking of a plea. And I believe that the nature of the application is of such a nature that if you entertained it and granted their orders, uh, then uh, there would be no plea taken as regards the second accused. It is therefore fitting and proper that you entertain the application before uh, the second accused is required to take a plea. Those are my humble submissions. If I will respond, lady, can I proceed? Can I proceed, my lady? My lady, uh, the directions were given by your brother Judge Justice Wakiaga that we are to proceed with plea taking today. We were told to ensure that mental assessment is on record, and that is what we've done. We have not received any instructions from the court or a court order stopping us from proceeding with the plea taking today nor have we received any documentation from the court or from the advocates on this documentation. So what we are aware of is that you are supposed to proceed with pleading today once a mental ses uh, assessment is on record. So subject to your directions, my lady, we believe the best position as the judge before you, and it has two accused persons, we just encourage the taking of plea of one accused and not the other. So we request that plea taking be done to be for both accused persons. Then if there's an application, 
we are either served or we are given interim orders or we can proceed with that on that on that road. But today we should proceed with completing the pilot. Lady, can I respond? There are no rules. Lady, can I be allowed to respond? Lady, are you getting Mr. Dunstan Omari? Lady, yes, my lady, a brief response. I should be patient. The question is going the same way we do in open. Yes, my lady, I can respond briefly. So now I'm calling on you. What do you want? My lady. Plea taking is such a critical issue. It changes somebody from being a suspect. Mr. Murray. Yes, my lady. Mr. Murray. Yes, my lady. Yes, my lady. Yes, my lady. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Could you place the file aside for three minutes? I change the gadgets I'm using. I'm at Milimandi High Court. I'm just outside the High Court and ask the plea taking be deferred to enable him to raise issues fundamental to his human rights. Yes, there was an order for a plea taking to be done today. That order was given on Friday. Saturday and Sunday were not working days. The accused filed his application we have since confirmed that it has been placed before the court file the nature of our application dramatically changes the status of the accused person right now he's a suspect if he takes a plea without his voice being heard Article 49 and Article 50 protects the accused person to be heard. Free counsels have pleaded that his rights be heard before the plea taking is taken. The state is adamant that the plea must be taken because it is the state that we are inducting it is the state that is culpable in that application. Mr. Mr. Murray. Yes, my lady. Mr. Murray. Yes, my lady. Because the, 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 we have a big problem with some, so try to be brief, get to the point so that okay. we can make the directions in this matter. Don't, don't, don't try not to pontificate at this point. Eh? Just try and be brief and to the point so we get what you are saying. My lady, our position is that the first accused person can take his plea. You, the second accused person's plea can be deferred. He's still in police custody. We, you direct, we serve and appear before you tomorrow for argument on our application. And therefore, a decision on that is done before the plea is taken. The second accused person is comfortable being still in the arms of the state. 
That's all, my lady. Yes. I appear with the M1. You have just seen that the session, eh? Yes. Hello, lady. Mr. Sugin? Yes, I appear with the M1. My lady, that my lady is the matter. Mr. Sugi, please proceed. No, You're watching briefly yes. someone for the victim. Yes. yes. Your name, President. Yes, Mr. Sugi, what did you want to say? Uh, Mr. Mansa. <laughs> Yes, my, my lady, together with the Uge, I'm leading on behalf of uh, the family, we are watching brief. And on our part, we are objecting to the grant of the bail um, My lady. What are you objecting to, Mr. Manza? We are objecting to the grant of bail. Am I, am I clear? Mr. Manza, you are objecting to the grant of the bill, yes? Yes, my lady, uh, I'm, I'm opposed to the grant of any cash pay or any bond term that they commit. Anything else? Where we are, I've been having difficulties trying to log in. I'm hoping that's the correct stage of the matter where we are. If it that could be so, then I plead to continue with my submission. Unfortunately, you have joined us rather late in the day, not on the record. So let me rule on what was coming before me that you have not been party to. My lady. Yes, you show him. Plea taking until his application, seeking to defer the plea taking. The application is not yet on the court record at this stage. The first accused and the state are ready to proceed with the plea taking. I know that the accused are facing, uh, are facing a joint charge of murder and in my view to be prejudicial for the first accused to take to be prejudicial for the plea of the first accused to be taken in the absence of the second accused. Having not seen the application by the second accused, I'm not able to give any directions with regard there to say that it should be served on the state. I will defer the plea taking for one day until Wednesday the 9th of September. The application by the second accused shall be served on the state. It shall be addressed and shall be conversed tomorrow the 8th of September 2020. Much obliged my lady. First person. Chris Philip Obure has successfully deferred the plea taking to tomorrow when his application will be filed will be heard 
inter-parties and the judge will make a determination. The gist of the application that we filed is that Chris Obure in the year 2017 was arrested and charged in criminal case number 15 criminal case number 15 of 2007 Republic versus Chris Philip Obure before the magistrate's court the allegation was misuse of firearm remember he's facing a charge of having his gun having been used to kill Omwenga. The trial proceeded and that case was dismissed. That case was dismissed on the 29th of uh, May 2018. The gun was released to our client, the second accused person. This was a case where private business interests and other state agencies were which hunting our client for the sole purpose of picking the gun and taking away the gun. That having succeeded, we were given an order to take to the firearms licensing board. The order is dated the 29th of May 2018 where the gun was returned to the accused to one Chris Obure. That gun has been in the safe custody of Chris Obure. The DPP has now approved charge to charge Chris Obure. The CCTV footage that was aired by Citizen TV is very clear that the gun was stolen by his bodyguard. He was nowhere. He was at Kempiski when the alleged murder was done. The CCTV footage captures the bodyguard, the first accused person, taking the gun at, at 6 in the morning very early, returning it at the wee, at the night, dusting the gun, wiping the gun, taking a bullet and replacing the bullet that had done the job. And therefore, the DPP and the DCI within their battles that they are facing, they have decided to charge our client. We are objecting that under the law, Chris Obure should be a state witness. He should not be an accused person. The evidence that was there was not presented to the DPP. And we, that is why we are saying we want the plea taking to be deferred until the DPP himself is forwarded that tape, that recording, because the DCI never forwarded that evidence. Had he forwarded that evidence of the CCTV footage, then Chris could be a state witness. That is why we are objecting that the court has agreed with us that taking a plea drastically changes the status of a person. Chris, the second accused person, is a prominent businessman, a legitimate uh, businessman who pays taxes, who is the branch head of the African region where his big company, the mother company, is registered in the US. It is business that has gone so. The accused person, the, the, the deceased person, was never friend. He's never even been to the accused person's crisis house. Neither was he there. Therefore, that is why we are shocking that this is proper raw abuse of state power. The criminal power. Article 157 that mandates the DPP to decide who to charge should be exercised judiciously, should be exercised with caution in regard to public interest. And let us not have trumped charges being brought against the second accused person. We shall deliberate the matters tomorrow. The court has listened to us and given us an deferral for those issues to be dealt with. Yes, Justice Odunga has said that the DPP is the absolute authority to institute criminal charges. But that criminal decision 
the decision to charge must be exercised within Article 157 that guarantees the rights of an accused person. Let not anybody be brought to court because of the competitors in the business industry or the police force that is after arresting our client and charging our client. I will give the ruling for and the order for the police that in that criminal matter that is there. It is the same gun was the first accused person instructed to go and pick the gun and use it so that Chris Obure can face murder trial. Those are the many issues that we intend to raise before the judge tomorrow. Any questions? So maybe why was it that necessary to file the application uh, to maybe so that the second accused not to take the plea? The issues we've raised need to be conversed. The court supervised the, excess, the application of one, Article 157. The decision to charge can be challenged by the High Court in the High Court, and the High Court can terminate the proceedings if there is evidence that the DPP has acted outside what the law provides, the powers he's given to him. That is the basis of our challenge. Thank you.